G'day and welcome to another edition of Sage of the Dusty Page. Today we're going to have a look at another Frostgrave supplement, um, The Maze of Malcor, written by Joseph A. McCulloch. It was uh, published in 2018 and uh, it's got some cracking artwork in it. And uh, it was, again, the art is done by Dimitri and this time Kate Burmack. Um, like I said, yeah, it's got 92 pages. Um, this is the sixth uh, expansion um, that had been released. So in the contents, we've got a, a, a fair bit on the rules update. So this was prior to second edition. Um, we have the campaign which has got 12 scenarios, uh, introduces five lesser schools of magic and their associated spells. You get new treasure, new base, base resources and uh, quite an extensive vestry. So there's 11 odd creatures and then there's seven... Um, uh, boss monsters, boss creatures, if you were. So, you get the introduction from Joseph. Um, it, it just takes you through the the, um, the background uh, of the, the maze. So, the, the whole adventure is basically set up in the Collegium of Fosgrave, which is uh, a whole part... Part museum, part school, part art gallery. Um, yeah. So the rules updates, they cover the placement of treasure tokens. Securing treasure, this is where it introduces the... If you're the last player on the table and there's unclaimed treasure, you roll a d20. If you get a 15 or better, um, you get to keep the treasure. Um... Automatic success and failure, rolls of 20 and 1. Um, changes in experience. And I, when I was actually reading this book again before I did my video, I really, um, the five experience points for each failed attempt um, of casting a spell, which is what how we've always played. But what I didn't pick up in the past was when, or when the wizard or apprentice suffers damage, so if you fail, but you don't do any damage, there's no no experience gain. But, um, yeah. So then you've got casting rolls, the use of scrolls. Um, uncontrolled creature actions. Um, there's some... Stuff on balance and scenarios, if you've got differences um, in levels between opponent opponents. Um, and then it talks about identifying creatures, controlling creatures, black market contacts. So this is how you can purchase things. And there's a bit of a table on actually creating experienced wizards. So, you, you know, so you're starting from more than level zero. Um, and it takes you through that. Now the the actual campaign, you know, a thunderous crack echoes through the frozen city as a giant shelf of ice and snow tore free from the mountainside above Frostgrave, crashing down into the city in an avalanche of death and destruction. When the torrent had finally halted and the snow cloud dissipated, all eyes turned to the mountain. And there, revealing the first time in a thousand years, was the great Collegium of Artistry, part magical university, part museum, part tourist attraction. The Collegium had flourished in Felstead's final days under the mad under the leadership of the seemingly immortal Malcor the Mad. The vast complex expanded, with new wings being built whenever they could fit, including up and down the rock face, or even deep within the mountain itself. Visitors called it the architectural wonders of the world. The students who often 
got lost in the endless tunnel, simply call it the maze. So it um it's certainly got a um a, a very vast area to to cover um uh, with the with the different um scenarios in it but when I read this I my mind immediately went to um Under Mountain in the Forgotten Realms A D and D campaign. So I was thinking vast dungeons, that sort of thing. So um, when you play the, the campaign, the first uh, six scenarios are really designed normally, uh, in a normal, the normal way. Um, the scenario seven to 12 allow, or give the opportunity for a player to actually play the, the principal villain and uh, manage the, the enemy creatures. So, as uh, um, as it states in here, this can actually make it very dangerous, and probably a good idea to make sure everyone that's you play with is in agreement. Okay, the the um, the environment also because it's been frozen and covered for a thousand years. The environment is fairly unique, so you get a unique set of um, creatures. As I've already alluded to, there's 11 um, new creatures and five, five wizard shades. Um, so the first first scenario is the relic room. Um, I don't go into the scenario as much, but just oversight. It involves moving furniture. It introduces... Um, Three new creatures, the Bogman, Blood Waves, and the Shrieking Wolf. Um, each scenario has got its own little group of special rules. The second scenario, the Great Hall, um, it uh, introduces the Glass Spider and is heavily um, involved in illusions. The third scenario, the Avery, is actually a foreign environment. It is... Um, jungle, hot, humid, and you have um, different conditions affect your, your warband um, due to that heat. Uh, the fourth one, the furnace, this introduces the coal man and actually makes the some parts of the train dangerous, so very hot, so you can suffer um, attacks from being pushed into or moving into close proximity of the furnaces. Um, the fifth scenario, uh, the gondola docks. I think this is pretty cool because you actually have the opportunity to um, gain a, a, fly, a flying boat um, that can be um, activated by any spellcaster and it lets you take things off the ground. Um, there's some rules for it in the in the expansion. The sky gone all the rules. If if you actually manage to get off the board with it, um, and that's how come there's obviously a gondola repair shops. The new um, base upgrade you can take. So if you get one, you can actually repair your gondola. Now look at that for a bit of cracking art. Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty. Pretty spectacular. The sixth scenario, the cloister. Um, actually gives you a, a uh, your first interaction with Melkor and his advisory council. So um, it, he's only there for a short time, but in that time he can potentially do a lot of damage, but this, if if you actually manage to kill him or do anything, it um, can change the outcome a little bit at the end of the campaign. So the next few um, scenarios, basically uh, at the end you end up fighting the wizard shade of one of the schools. So 
either astromancer, distortionist, fate caster, a somnomancer, or a spiritualist. Um, yeah, so the, the, the first one is the wheel, and uh, I'm assuming will be a sononancer, the echodrome, the astrocanum, And each one has got the shades and a shade as a, the principal enemy. And you get to be on the end of some of these new spells, which are, are pretty cool. Uh, the Bender. Uh, the Necropolis. And then lastly, but by no means, the Headmaster's Office. And this will be the final confrontation with Melkar. Um, again, the They've all got set up rules and they've got special rules. So this, these last scenarios are no pushover. And, um, and certainly if a player is playing Melkor or one of the wizard shades, yeah, you, you, the player could have a, a very tough time. Again, but look, the art is just, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful um, now we're going to the schools of the pentangle so yeah uh, astromancer um, the, these schools are slightly weaker than the 10 primary schools but I think they're all you know they've got a place and there's some rules um, that are slightly changed to enable you to play one of these new wizards. And there's a full range of miniatures from North Star and Osprey to um, support it. But um, yeah, your yeah, Astromancer, your Distortionist, a Fake Caster, Sononancer, um, and the Spiritualist. I particularly like the Spiritualist because it's a line school, so necromatic and Third maturist. Can't pronounce it properly. Sorry. Um, and they've got very good access to some really cool spells. It'd be quite a potent mix, I think. But then you you go through the lost spells. So each school has six spells instead of the eight. Um, though one has six slash seven, I suppose. So you've got alignment, media strike, misalignment, shape star, fire elemental, star fall, and star fire bolt. Uh, the distortion is break armor, collapse, fracture, implode, or explode. So you can cast that spell one way or the other, which gives you a sort of an extra option in my mind. Misstep, whiplash, awesome spell. Um, allows for quick, quick movement. Does have a few... Um, risks but it, I think it's a really good spell. You have the Fate Caster you get Blood Wager Fickle Fingers, Mischance Scatter, Serendipity and True Gold the Sonancer Charm, Imbue Instrument Humming Blade, Steel Voice, Sound Cloud Sound Wave and the Spiritualist Call Wrath, Command Ethereal, Ethereal Form, Inhabit Nightmare and Speak With Dead now that is just a, I really like that piece of art. I think it's it's actually, it's just fantastic. And there is, again, the, the playing the wizards from the, the pentangle. They're just, um, the guidelines to actually draw them up, changes you need to make. And there you got your new treasures. Um, don't quite know how you actually roll on the second second table. Oh, sorry. Yes, I do. Now yeah, I do. First die roll. Second die roll. Yep. My mistake. Um, and you get a fantastic range. Like there's 40 odd items here um, for you to potentially get. And it takes you through all them. Um, interesting enough, there's a few of these that help you if you've got... Um, 
a permanent injury, I think. I can't remember. Um, something about an eye or something you can um, put on um, or put in, put in um, to when you when you've lost an eye. Um, yeah, but there's um, some really, you know, pretty cool um, magic items. So, and with the rules of the, the game, if you substitute your treasure rolls out to roll on the, the treasure table in here, you also get a roll on the lost magic um, table. So that's a bit of a bonus. As I mentioned earlier, here is the, the gondola um, repair shop. So you can use it as a base upgrade and look after your gondola. Um, here's your bestry. bestry. Um, there is a picture of, I'm, I'm assuming, an acris, a Chris bird. Um, the advisory council, which is um, three rats. Wraiths. Um, that's the the stats for the first wizard shade, Alenta. And you have Banshees, Bloodways, Bogman, Coleman, Collegium Porter, uh, Florissa, another wizard shade, Glass Spider, and you got Kalish, Kareem, um, Another wizard and then uh, Mantidus, which looks like a grasshopper or a praying mantis sort of thing. Auto Vaco, another wizard chain, face caster, a phase cat, a shrieking wolf, which can be anything. It doesn't necessarily need to be a shrieking, uh, it could be any creature. It's just uh, basically a small construct. Um, that can shriek, so it could be a shrieking cat or it could be a shrieking um, statue. Starfire Elemental, another good piece of art too. Um, Tooth, uh, uh, another shade, and there is the artwork of Melkor and his um, cancel, the three wraiths. That's slightly terrifying, I have to say. And then you got the last bit with the Wrath of Melkor, um, his actions. Now, he's not particularly tough, but he can cast spells really easily. Um, and he's got and uses quite a number of wands. So, yeah. Overall, and that's, that is the, the book. Right, look, my clothing thoughts on this are... They're well constructed scenarios. Yeah. Um, Joseph, for all his books, has introduced new rules, and I hope he continues to do that with, um, and he does do that with um, different supplements, um, and everyone gets to have a bit of a go at them. And I know he follows all the different f pages and groups and gets a vibe and a feel. And feedback from players um, to see whether they become permanent rules. Um, you get to play the villain. You get to play the bad guy against other players. I think that's pretty cool. Um, we get exposed to five new schools of magic. Uh, maybe not quite as powerful as the original ten. But just growing the game. Again, 11 new baddies. Um, I think it's excellent value for money. And the other thing I, you know, again, with mortal en enemies coming out, the five boss creatures, six boss creatures in here, you could um, definitely have as recurring villains. I think that is something you could really play around with. But uh, all in all, this is, without doubt, uh, another essential addition for your Frostgrave collection. Um, there are hours of fun here for you. And... Um, yeah, you should get on it. So, please like, 
and subscribe and have a great day.